Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Moira, I mean Overwatch Central. So we've actually done one better than analysing some of Custer's gameplay. We are in fact about to speak to the man himself on how he's been finding a new hero and generally a lot of tips from a pro player that focuses a lot on these flex supports. Be sure to let us know if you'd like us to talk to any other players about other certain heroes but let's get started. So I guess first and foremost like who are you, where are you from and why should people play Myra? Uh, my name is Scott Custer Kennedy. I'm from Adelaide, Australia, and I, I think Moira is an incredibly versatile hero that's a lot of fun and uh, can actually be really effective to the team in certain situations. One of the sort of main things that people said when they saw gameplay of Myra is that she didn't seem very effective, I guess, that she didn't seem high impact. Is that something that you agree with? And where do you think that her strengths lie? Her major strengths are how versatile she is in the things that she can do. Uh, she can put out uh, a lot of damage, but also a lot of healing. I think her kit is very subtle in the amount of healing and damage that she can actually do. Uh, some of the numbers that you can put up is, uh, is quite ridiculous. And then on top of that, if you are doing enough healing and damage, it then charges your ult ridiculously fast, which is also an ult that can be very, very effective if used in the correct situations. When it comes to sort of skill ceilings and skill flaws, where do you think Myra is? Because she isn't mechanically demanding, not as much as an Ana or a Zen, for example. What kind of transferable skills from other heroes bode well for people that want to pick up Myra? I, I wouldn't say she's as demanding as like an Ana, but I think um, unless you're like, specifically considering the aim of Zenyatta, she's she's a lot harder to play because there's a lot more things in your kit that you need to be essentially running with cooldown and also the balance between um, doing damage with your right click and then charging your left click heal is really important because that essentially dictates how much healing you can do in the future so you really got to find like the niche part and I think that's what's going to be hard about Moira and that's why I think she's actually quite mechanically tough to play and it's based on a lot of decision making compared to actual raw aim. You played a little bit in like sub games before the Hulktastic Cup that was this weekend which you used as a good opportunity to play her a lot more. What kind of things did you learn about playing her? Um, I think people underestimate how valuable the damage orb is. I think people were starting to recognize it more and understand like how to counter the hero more as the game went on. A lot of people started playing D.Va more because her right click is incredibly strong against Moira because if you just eat every single orb that Moira sends out then her value her value is actually a lot lower so a lot of people started just playing D.Va against it and then understanding that once I fade I don't really have anything in my kit to go anywhere as well so people started uh, punishing and like understanding that there are limitations to the hero and they started working it out as their opposition team so it, it was actually interesting because you know a couple of the last few maps that i had against you know uh the spanish team and um the lg evil guys was it, it was interesting because i started to get a real understanding for what this hero can and can't be good at we had the joke of jeff kaplan when she was launched with the opaf thing the 10k healing that you did in a six minute round of king's row was crazy like do you think that there's elements of her gameplay that need toning back a little bit? Yeah, I definitely think she she's a little overtuned at times. Um, I'm, I'm still not sure if that's like the way she's supposed to be. So that if you if you just let Amoria do what Amoria wants to do, she's going to win the game and she's going to do pull out these ridiculous stats. Um, I, I think the major thing that's like overpowered for her is how fast her ult charges. If you're doing like, I, I, I can finish a fight with 70% ult charge after using it at the start of the fight depending on how long it goes for, how much healing I do, and then just how much follow-up damage I go through. So it, she can be overpowered if given the space. Um, but I don't. I think that that's like a lot of other heroes as well. So I'm not 100% sure if she's overtuned um, as much as it's just people don't have the understanding of it yet. So uh, we'll see. But And it's, I guess it's up to Blizzard's discretion. But the thing that definitely needs to be changed is the ultimate charge. The sort of counter argument to the ultimate charge nerf is that it doesn't seem like a high impact ultimate compared to something like Transcendence or Nano Boost. Or is that something that you would kind of argue against? It's definitely not a game-breaking ultimate and something that's going to like win you a fight. I'd put it on like the same level as like an Earth Shatter, right? So it, it's, it has its utility and it can be incredibly effective and win you a team fight. 
but it's not that one thing like a graviton surge which is like we're going to this fight and if we get value out of this we win the fight um the thing that it does really strong is it's so, so versatile in the things that you can do with it right you can pop it it lasts for eight seconds you can um heal a target for 120 healing you can heal multiple of your targets for 120 healing you can do that against ultimates you can do that with your own ultimates when you're doing damage and st stuff like that so it's not limited to one thing though you know the the bene the like transcendence is amazing defensive ultimate but the limitation of it is it does all this healing but that's all it does right if if you never get the opportunity to use a defensive ultimate then it's not that valuable while moira poses like multiple different situations in which it could be useful um you saw me use it multiple times in <clears throat> in the cup where a couple of times i used it to push through a choke um after they'd used all their defensive abilities and then like just pushing through healing my entire team and then as soon as we're in starting doing damage uh i got nanoed a couple of times if you get nanoed with more oh you can burn 200 hp target in about one and a half two seconds so it's it, it's so interesting the things that can be done with it so and i think that's why it's an exciting ultimate it's sort of enabled triple tanks to an extent as well do you think that's just something that people were toying around with or do you think that myra in herself can bring back that kind of strategy uh, yeah i think that's where she thrives because it allows her or her healing to do like the most value you're always healing things you don't need to um like do much to heal so many things right if you just like breathe your breath over the three targets you're doing 150 healing to all of them over three seconds um so that's a huge amount of ult charge it then enables her all your tanks are going to be so healthy um it's, it, I think it will come back if Moira stays in her current form, it, at least on maps like King's Row and ones where like triple tanks were super effective. Um, and she's really strong during that. So that's that's going to be exciting. Hopefully bring back a renaissance of that. But Moira's limitation is when you're not playing triple tank, right? When you're playing the Tracer Genji and a Farah. Like Moira can't help pretty much any of those classes. So there, there is the downfall of Moira in certain compositions, which I think is really good for the game. Yeah, that's worth talking about as well. Like the times that you did switch off Myra to Mercy or Zen, what were the reasons? Like what situations did you think that Myra wasn't doing much? Yeah, I, I think a really good point to bring up on that situation was the the uh, the Kings Row game against. Um, I, I guess the team doesn't have a name, but it was the one which had Tailspin playing Farah. So Tailspin's playing Farah and Kings Row. So Kings Row, we're playing triple tank. It should be an incredibly good Moira point, uh, Moira map, but Tailspin's Farah, can't, I can't do anything to deal with it. We're playing triple tank. There's the limitations of that. Um, yeah, it's, it, it sort of makes it like really interesting to see like when you need to switch the Moira because she, she can, even though I was being effective against everything, the problem that we were having wasn't against the things that I was being valuable at, it was the Farah that was just doing so much work. So you need to just find your limitations, be like, oh, maybe if we just played a Lucio, the team would be more versatile and we'd be able to move more. So I, I did switch off um, Moira a few times, especially on King of the Hill where I played Lucio, Mer we played Lucio Mercy. Sometimes you just needed more raw damage and I switched to Zenyatta. So there are situations that are becoming very evident that Moira just can't be effective on. And like against Barry is definitely one of those. Yeah, I can already imagine that there'll be a lot of people that are wanting to main or even one trick Moira. And is that going to be a big problem for people? Just because, as you said, she's a really subtle kind of hero, but it can be really difficult to know when a Moira on your team is or isn't doing anything to help you i guess there will be very obvious indicators as i said you you can get high medals um on moira even if you're not being effective but there, i think there will be a lot of times where you're just not getting any medals at all um i had a couple of like really bad rounds on moira um through the tournament due to like some bad play but it's also a lot of forced bad play and it's especially if your team is not playing around on moira hopefully people have the understanding of the character or understanding of the game to know that they could be more effective playing a Zenyatta or playing an Ana or yeah, anything like that. So um, hopefully the indicators are there and people don't start just, yeah, as I said, like, oh, I'm, I have gold healing because I've been healing the Reinhardt and it, or everyone uselessly for the last, you know, three minutes. So what kind of areas do you think are going to be big mistakes for Moira's? What kind of big mistakes are you expected to see out of people that want to pick her up and play her? Uh, I think 
it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of people that really struggle to find the balance between offense and defensive uh, Moira because you need to be doing both at all times playing Moira. And if you do one or the other too much, you're losing effectiveness, you know, ridiculously, right? You're, you need to be always throwing a healing out because that is like the win condition of Moira. She does so much healing. But you also need to be aggressive enough that you're doing damage, that you're charging it all, and that you're getting the value out of that. So I, I think it's going to be people finding that balance and finding that uh, the limitations of the amount of healing that they can do and the amount of damage that they can do. So um, it, it, is, it, is, it is a tightrope. So it, it'll be interesting to see where it actually ends up, especially in the professional level as well. So, um, with you saying about the healing and damage thing, we did a video where we looked over some of your gameplay from the Hulktastic Cup, and one thing that I noticed was most of the damage jobs that you put out were damage jobs. They were very rarely healing ones. Like, why were you, when you were healing with your primary fire, just sort of sprinkling it a little bit, not using it too much? How did you find that balance, and where was it most effective? Finding that the healing orbs, um, every time I was throwing them within my team, you were never getting maximum value out of them, right? You, unless you're in a small room it, it you were never getting the full value out of it you're probably getting half the value and then it was flying away and i was i couldn't I, unless the team is in a very huge clump and everyone's low and the, the healing orb is going to get effective straight away um then i found it was quite useless because it usually ended up bouncing into a place that it was never going to heal anyone because you know you're not playing in like a perfect box area right there's there's so many different things that it was bouncing across so it could be used more if you could find like the effective bouncing spots and like actual like niche spots that you could get it all. But it was so reliant on like where your team's positioning was like and everything around that. So I, I, I didn't like using it and I thought the damage orb was always getting value every time, especially on a map like King's Row where the enemy is obviously in one spot. You can just throw it in their general direction. And you're going to get maximum value. You get about 10 to 15% ult charge and therefore you're charging your ult and then on the other hand, you have your left-handed healing, um, which you can only, you can just spray, and as you said, sprinkle for like half a second, and then that uh, applies the healing over time, which is the 50 healing for, for three seconds, on every person. So you can just do that every few seconds, and then everyone's going up. It's not as fast as if you were just like holding it down, but what this does is it conserves your healing charge while also healing everyone up at a reasonable rate uh, at all times. So. I found that was the best way to min-max charging your ultimate. And I think the ultimate is the true win condition for uh, Moira. If you can just get your ultimate over and over and over again, it's so hard to deal with. Yeah, because essentially every time that you got it, you were using it straight away a lot of the time. Like, was there any particular reason other than to, I guess, provoke a response, you know, get the enemy to drop sound barrier, get the Reinhardt to drop Earth Shatter like we saw a lot of the time. Is there any other reason other than just almost putting the enemy under pressure? Were you trying to bait stuff out in particular or? Uh, well, because uh, Moira's ult charges so fast, as I was saying before, and it is so versatile. Once you pop it, the enemy generally has to do something to respond. It's not like one of those ultimates like, oh, he can't get offensive value out of it. Um, or he, you know, he's just healing his teammates. Like, because you can do so much with it, it forces them to do something, right? Like, if it can force... It can force a team fight. It can force them to use their own ultimates. And if, let's say I pop my Moira ult and they put, pop a sound barrier, even if nothing happens for the, the rest of the fight, that's still a win because Moira's ult can charge probably maybe 50% faster than a sound barrier most of the time at the, in its current form. She has that element of fluidity as well that I think players like Doomfist have too, where all of their abilities roll into one quite well. Uh, we haven't really spoken about the right click at all and as you said, often you can be in situations where if you're healing a lot and you run out of weapon charge that you can often be starved of actually helping out your team. How do you sort of pair in doing a little bit of damage as well? What have you found useful? A couple of times, uh, like with the right click, you want to always be using it, right? You should always be positioned almost just behind your Reinhardt shield. You want to be always using a right click. If you're not throwing an orb, if you're not healing anyone, you should just be throwing it at the enemy, trying to build charge. Um, the thing that like I really learned is I was like, what I can do is I can play aggressive and right click and then as soon as they turn on me, I can fade away, which sometimes works great and is definitely something that you should be doing. But if you do it in the wrong situation, it can force an engagement onto you because once you use fade, as I said, you have no ability to keep yourself alive anymore. Let's say I throw my damage orb, I'm right clicking someone and then they charge me down, I fade away. All of a sudden I have nothing in my kit to do anything other than my primary fire abilities. So it, 
you need to be very careful with like positioning of the right click because obviously you need to be doing it at all times but as soon as you go too aggressive it is very punishable um because once you're out of sight of fade it's it's a hard game to win there wasn't many opportunities where you were going up against one but were there any things that you noticed about playing into one that you feel are important to mention uh, I think playing against the Moira, you, you, you tend to realize uh, she is very actually susceptible when in her ultimate, like when I was playing it. Uh, she is, she's just sitting on her own. She does have a good amount of healing, but she's stunnable, she's CCable, um, and it generally forces people to like believe they can play more aggressive than they should with the Moira ult on. I definitely know I got caught out a couple of times with it, so. Her ultimate is very uh, flimsy and it can be it can be counted and you can die like very easily to a lot of different things so you you do need to be really careful with it that was the one thing that like i really noticed that um i, I got overconfident with the ultimate a couple of times you're not indestructible uh while it's happening so uh, i thought i thought that was like a really interesting point and i i you need to as much as you want to be using on cooldown you got to be careful that you're not just going in too hard too fast so what kind of situations would you just not play moira either map game modes kind of heroes on your team or the enemy's team uh generally if there um there's any form of like high ground so like if you think of like first point to barney second point dorado uh, moira has a really tough time gaining verticality and if people are fighting on the high ground and she's on the low ground, she's actually completely useless because none of her things have any effectiveness. Um, she has no fast way to get up on high grounds. Um, so high ground like is definitely a rough thing. Uh, and if she can't, if everyone's gonna be fighting up there, she's, she, you should be switching because you're not gonna get any value. Uh, and then I think like on the exact same thing, if they're gonna be playing any sort of, uh, if your team is gonna be playing any sort of dive, She's not as effective as, you know, a Lucio or a Zenyatta or a Mercy because those those characters can get value by, like, working with the team. Even though you can dive as Moira, it doesn't mean that you're being effective as a healer um, when playing a dive because you can't... It's, it's a lot harder to heal your teammates. Uh, you don't actually do a ton of damage outside of your orb, so, you know, you're probably better off just playing a Lucio which can move with your team or a Zen that can actually discord and heal your teammates as the dive occurs, right? So... That was that that those are the moments where I'm like, nah, probably just better off playing something else. I remember seeing like a comment on Reddit of something where somebody was like, I'm in plat, but like watching Custer, I could do very similar things. Like, where is the difference between somebody that's in diamond versus you know a top 500 pro when it comes to playing Myra? I I, I think that comment is like pretty uh, pretty negligible because like it, it, the things that it's just like pure decision making and like using your abilities on cooldown and like to be effective, right? Like there was a clip that was on Reddit um, that came out of like uh, me peeling for my Ana and, or, or Zen and then healing him up, getting stuck, shifting away, coming out, right clicking the tracer and he dies. Like in theory, that's like a very easy play, but like you can say that about like half the classes in Overwatch, right? It's, it's hard to, it seems like a very obvious thing once you've seen it be done, but actually executing in the heat of the moment is actually hard to do and that's why like w characters like Winston there are those like these ridiculously high tier Winstons even though their kit is very uh, like simplistic but it's all based on decision making and um, positioning so I think Win uh, Moira plays very similar to Winston because she doesn't have any mechanical like aiming intensive really her right click is a little but not that much because she doesn't have aim any aim intensive, I relate it to Winston in terms of it's a lot of decision making and understanding of the character and the limitations that you can do. Everything seems simple once you look at it, right? And it's the same thing with like Mercy, right? A lot of people go, ah, oh, Mercy is like super easy to play. It's like so obvious how to do things. And then, you know, then you go play and it's like, you keep dying. It's like, I just don't play this character. And it's like, well, yeah, because it, it looks a lot harder than it is because, you know, all the movement, all the idea, like all the mobility is actually a lot harder than it is. So I, I think, it, it will catch a lot of people off guard how like how hard it can be it's the same thing with like almost like doomfist in a way right doomfist had no aim requirements but he, and it seemed like you could just punch anyone and then i was like okay well i'm gonna play doomfist and i just punch a wall and then i go on to die right so it, it's i i think this game is deceptively hard and i think moira will add to that as well i spoke to aaron keller at blizzcon about moira and he said that jeff goodman who's one of like you know the principal designers when it comes to balance and stuff is going to be looking at the stats of Moira when it comes to her self-sustain and how long she stays alive. Do you think he's going to be looking at Moira now thinking she's pretty much unkillable, this is a bit of a problem? 
there was a specific fight where I sort of like highlighted that exact moment where uh, the entire team got wiped and the entire team chases after me at the end of the second point of King's Row. And I actually managed to kite the entire team all the way back to our point, and then XUC goes on to pin someone and then get the like four man Earth Shatter that you saw on Reddit. So, like, it's she is very survivable. If you just if you're playing for yourself, it's very strong because you have three different abilities that can keep you alive. You can always be charging a right click, which is giving you life steal. But you then have your fade that has a six second cooldown, and then your healing orb allows you to run and heal yourself for essentially you know, three or four seconds. So if you're using all of those really well in conjunction, it is very hard to die, and there aren't many characters in the game that can kill you. Do you think that she's going to get nerfed before she goes onto live? I don't think she'll get nerfed before she goes onto live. I, well, I think her old charge should get nerfed before it goes onto live, but um, I don't think anything else should change with her until she goes onto live because there is... It's still a very small sample size, right? Um, of, like, people that can play it. And there were a lot of people that, like, didn't get effectiveness out of Moira, so... Um, I think once people begin to understand how Moira is played um, and how to play against her, she won't be as strong as she is right now, and she can be considered. With what you've just said, do you think that Moira is going to be somewhat meta? Do you think that she's going to be like S tier? Where do you think she's going to stand when it comes to popularity, both in the competitive scene, but also in like ladder matches as well? I, I think in the competitive scene, she will be played... Um, in a very niche role, which is like within the triple tank. Uh, so, you know, the King's Rose, uh, certain points of Koth where, you know, you can get away with like playing like a, a Ryan's Eye, uh, Hog, Ryan's Eye, Diva, and that kind of stuff because Moira sort of excels in those games. But I think outside of that, you can probably, you're probably better off playing like an Anna or a Zen, especially with the buffs to Anna. But uh, in, in comp, I think people will try and make it work everywhere. But I think it'll slowly wean out. Another thing about Moira as well, as much as even her damage numbers and healing numbers are high, you also sometimes feel like you aren't being effective even when you are because of like how the healing, you don't you don't see that you're healing people uh, that much. Your damage orbs, you don't really get to see them do damage or healing and that kind of stuff. So people might not get that instant gratification of what they're doing. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be, I don't think she'll be incredibly popular on the uh, on the in the public scene and in the competitive scene. Sure, that kind of raises another thing that you said as well where you'd play an Anna or a Zen instead of her. Where does she, is she like a main healer role, like a Mercy or a Lucio, or is she more the the flex support in the team? I honestly think um, going into this meta, which is exciting, is hopefully the game moves away from that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, idea where, you know, so far in the history of the game, we've had Lucio is always going to be in the game. Um, but I, it seems like the game is moving away from that um, because especially with this upcoming patch, I think all healers are viable, probably Mercy the least. Um, she, I think she will still be used within Farrah Mercy uh, for the small maps that Farrah Mercy is useful, but otherwise I don't think she's going to be played that much and she's going to be that useful. So, But otherwise I think all healers are interchangeable based on the situation, right? It, I don't think, I think people are moving away that Lucio is a must pick in every composition. So I think, I think you might see a lot more Anna Zens, Zen Moiras, uh, maybe Anna Moira, Lucio Moira. Yeah, I think every, like those four healers are very interchangeable based on the the goal that you're trying to accomplish, right? So I th I'm, I'm looking forward to see where the meta ends up lying, but I honestly hope that it, it stays incredibly diverse and that, you know, everything is viable at any given time. Cool. And sort of finally to finish on, where can people find like more of your gameplay? No doubt a lot of Moira when competitive, when she comes out into competitive, sorry. Uh, but also like a golden tip, like we usually ask people at the end of videos like this, like what golden tip would you say with improving at the game, not necessarily just around Moira, but any sort of golden tip that you could give on the game and improving at it? Uh, I think my golden tip would be um, don't underestimate the value of just going into a custom game and practicing a specific thing, right? You know, I've, I've picked up a lot of uh, new heroes lately and the value of just like, going into a custom game and going into skirmish and playing Lucio and just wall riding around and being like, okay, I want to get over there, get up there. And then you like practice your wall rides. And it just, it teaches you the raw mechanics that sometimes you're not going to focus on in the game. So same thing with Moira. I did a lot of running around with Moira, understanding like what I could and couldn't do with the, with, with the mechanics. So uh, same with thing with any character in the game. If you just break down every character the, to the most like basic fundamentals, and practice those, you will improve at the game more than if you're just playing ranked and then just 
trying to get better at everything at once. Uh, yeah, and you can find me at twitch.tv slash Custa with two A's. And my Twitter is Custa OW. And that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. I do definitely recommend you to check out Custer. He's a great guy. Very much looking forward to seeing the Dallas Field guys play soon. But again, let us know if you would like us to speak to any other players about any other heroes. And until next time, take care. We'll see you then.